G'day guys. G'day. Welcome to another episode of Cemeteries Down Under. We're here in the beautiful bushland town of Springwood today in the Blue Mountains of Sydney. And we're here to show you around and also tell you about Norman Lindsay. He was one of the great artists and literature figures in Australia. So he has a wonderful story to tell and we hope you enjoy the episode. Catch you soon. See you soon guys. So here at Springwood Cemetery I will try and film everything showing you the history of Springwood and please pause it if you need to read it. Hope I'm not going too fast. And I also noticed besides Norman Lindsay, there's a few notable graves which I'll will show you. You got the oldest grave at Springwood. And then you've got significant graves, or obviously Norman Lindsay. And then there's a William Curtis, a Sydney barrister and judge. So we'll try and find all of them for you. So here we are, we came across this gorgeous little tombstone of the Teddy. Um, obviously a, a small child's grave. And it's Doogie, Peter Dougal Austin. 30th of August 2013 we love you very much mummy daddy Davy and Reggie and um, but I really love the headstone it's just so sweet I've never seen one like that rest in peace Doogie so this beautiful little statue captured my eyes it's got a little pigeon and a priest and it's only a recent burial um, but I really love the little statue this beautiful grave here I was drawn to this beautiful grave of the little statue with the angel. And I'll tell you what I can. This says, in loving memory of Millie, dearly loved daughter of Walter and Harriet Daniels died the 27th of April 1927 age 12 years and it says we live to mourn um, the loss of one we did our best to save um, beloved on earth recreated gone remembered in the grave that's so beautiful and I'm sorry I can't read the writing down here I'll try um, the words are very faded, so it's not. I can see 1928 there, 
Sit something September, September the 10th. 10th, died the 10th, but um, the loved wife. wife of um, Daniels, Walter Daniels and Harriet. So obviously the parents um, were laid to rest, but just look at the detail on this gorgeous angel. So we found the oldest grave in Springwood Cemetery of Private Francis Smith. As you can see, he's got a really these graves kind of weathered in time and you can't read it but luckily the council luckily the council have left a plaque we will tell you about him and what it actually says on his tombstone So here we got in loving memory of Ellis John Wilmot Jack and if I should die think only this of me that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England that's so beautiful and he obviously was in the army he was in the transport convoy thank you for your service sir rest in peace Henry H. Britton and um, it says Rector of Ride for 29 years died 30th of July 1913 age 77 heaven's perfect peace so Ride's a suburb of Sydney so we found the grave of William Curtis and we were looking around a bit because Obviously his damage, his grave is damaged, which is really sad to see. And he was a Sydney barrister and judge and associated with the establishment of the Sydney Symphony of the Orchestra. Coming up to this one, in the cemetery out here is Ned Kelly. Even with his last apparent saying, such is life. Very cute. While we're looking around at the cemetery art here, we've got this unusual one here where he obviously loved pup pup um, or golf. It's quite cute. So this gorgeous one here, in loving memory of. Kathleen, it looks like Dappen, love daughter, child. Um, doesn't say the date. May Loftus died the sixth of September. Um, aged only. Can you read that? Nine. 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 Nine years. Look at the beautiful sleeping angel. And you've got dear little Bobby 
an angel on earth and you've got some more names down there. this gorgeous big family plot here so we need to see who's here that's the white family Carmen died 1932 Roma died 1940 Mary 2012, so that was only recent. Walter, and you got Mary Bacconi, and then you've got Elizabeth and Simon. <coughs> and I love how you got the big cross here, it really stands out. And then the words here until the day shall break and the shadows flee away this beautiful grave here got forever in our hearts Andy Straub Andrew Francis Hart born in England the 7th of April 1960 rode on ahead I love that saying 19th of the 4th 2011 caring biker husband dad brother and friend love the ride rest in peace my friend and this grand fence with its gate wanted to come and have a look in here because it's the most um catches your eye as soon as you drive in here Loving memory of Estelle Bradley, died the 9th of May 1974, age 58, resting with her family. And then you've got loving memory of Valerie Allison, died the 28th of November 1918, loved by all. And it's quite a big plot, so I assume there's other burials here, but no more names. So. I really love look at the fence it's just amazing so this part of the cemetery here is a new part and it's the Ashes Walk, it's a resting place that draws on the natural beauty and peacefulness of the Blue Mountains. To maintain the natural bushland feel, the only memorabilia allowed on the walk is the plaque on the curb. So, you know, you can't put statues in that here because the people that are here just wanted to be part of the bush of the Blue Mountains because it's a beautiful place. So we'll do a quick walk through.
beautiful stain. Norman Alfred William Lindsay, born the 22nd of February 1879, was an Australian artist, etcher, sculptor, writer, art critic, novelist, cartoonist and amateur boxer. One of the most prolific and popular Australian artists of his generation. Lindsay attracted both acclaim and controversy for his works many which infused the Australian landscape with erotic pagan elements and were deemed by his critics to be anti-Christian, anti-social and degenerate. A vocal nationalist, he became a regular artist for the Bulletin at the height of its cultural influence and advanced staunchly anti-modernist views as a leading writer on Australian art. When friend and literary critic Bertram Stevens argued that children like to read about fairies rather than food, Lindsay wrote and illustrated The Magic Pudding in 1918, now considered a classic work of Australian children's literature. Apart from his creative output, Lindsay was known for his larrikin attitudes and personal libertine philosophy. As well as his battles with what he termed wowerism, one such battle is portrayed in the 1994 film Sirens, starring Sam Neill and our very own Elle McPherson, and filmed on location at Lindsay's own home in the Blue Mountains west of Sydney. It's now known as the Norman Lindsay Gallery and Museum and is maintained by the National Trust of Australia. Lindsay was married twice first to Kathleen Parkinson in 1900 and then next to Rose Gady in 1920, one of his models. He had five children, Jack, Raymond, Philip, Janet and Helen. He was born in Creswick, Victoria and he was the son of Surgeon Robert Charles William Alexander Lindsay and Jane Elizabeth Lindsay. Lindsay often did paintings and sculptures of nudes and his frank and sumptuous nudes were highly controversial. In 1940, Lindsay took 16 crates of paintings, drawings and etchings to the US to protect them from the war. Unfortunately, they were discovered when the train they were on caught fire and were impounded and subsequently burned as pornography by American officials. The artist's older brother Lionel remembered Lindsay's reaction, don't worry, I'll do more. Lindsay was associated with a number of poets, such as Kenneth Slessor, Francis Webb and Hugh McRae, influencing them in part through a philosophical system outlined in his book, Creative Effort. He also illustrated the cover for the seminal Henry Lawson book, While the Billy Boils, Lindsay's son, Jack Lindsay, emigrated to England where he set up Fran Frolico Press, which issued works illustrated by Lindsay. Of the screen versions of Lindsay's work, the first major screen adaption of Lindsay's literary works was the 1953 British film, Our Girl Friday, based on his 1934 novel, The Cautionary Armourist. The 1969 Australian-British co-production, Age of Consent, adapted from Lindsay's 1938 novel of the same name, was the last full-length feature film directed by Michael Powell and starred James Mason and Helen Mirren in her first credited movie role. Norman Lindsay loved the Blue Mountains and he requested to be buried in Springwood near his home in Falconbridge. His home is now an art gallery where you can see many of his works and sculptures in the sprawling gardens which I'll show. He died in 1969, aged in his 90s. Thanks for watching another episode of Cemeteries Down Under um, and I hope you enjoyed the story of Norman Lindsay 
and we only did a quick tour because there's a funeral about to commence there's people coming in to mourn so out of respect to them it's best that we leave now but hope you enjoyed the tour around or well, the quick tour around the cemetery and if you want to see more videos like this don't forget to like share and subscribe all right catch you for now see you guys Bye.